Good morning, folks. First off, new article at the Ice on Observing campaign. This was the focus of yesterday's fly on the wall. We now have two and a half hours of Ice on discussion and hypothesizing there. But if you come to this article, click the word brightness. It links to Ice on secular light curve, which is right now on a x equals y squared right side of a parabola brightening fast kind of situation. Spitzer has been snapping shots for 10 years now. The infrared scope has a unique eye for the universe. Pretty good article I've linked for you below. Shot of the day from NASA's Earth Observatory, the Garden and Hog Islands in Michigan. Earthquake watch score went up last night. We'll explain fully in a bit. But without any massive quakes, we did indeed see the other way in which the world waves in an unusual uptick for a locale. How many times have these watches seen uptick four pointers in the Caribbean? Otherwise, the Southwest Pacific continues to rumble more than the rest of the Ring of Fire. And folks, the Canary Islands went back to sleep weeks ago, but we just took our first little tremor again there. Let's get to know NOAA's Environmental Visualization Lab a bit better. Hiding in plain sight below their primary graphics are the real-time charts. These are outstanding. For example, this is the current ozone concentration. You can also sort by land temperature or seawater temps like you see here. Perhaps you'd like to see all the precipitable water on one frame without Mimic glitching you into epilepsy. You can do that here. Here are the land temps I mentioned, by the way. A good reminder that climate extremes pushes both hot and cold, as well as wet and dry. Just an update on the 2013 U.S. weather records. While heat did own 2012, it's getting spanked by cold this year. It's not close at all. And precipitation is trouncing them both, with snow records having more than doubled. Gulf of Mexico now has a contender brewing, not that Florida has ever really gotten a break from this lazy drawn out development of the last week. Speaking of which, development south of Evo is not really much of a concern, even before arrival she's sending moisture to the four corners as expected. Spot of good news though, she may swing back southwest, let's hope for that. As I look at a dead x-ray flux yet again, let me remind you that I began publicly describing the solar shutdown in November 2012. Little did I know that the NSO was already tracking a magnetic shutdown, but since then, you have all seen backside flares and enormous eruptions on the limb pretty much every week. Just think about the red sun images I show at the end. And for nearly two full rotations around our star, she has just shied away from Earth. Sunspots aren't always as weak as the flaring, but they're pretty close right now. The redeeming factor is Big Mama headed in just south of the solar equator. Folks, I see one tiny minor CME impact signature. We expected the second to hit yesterday, so this first one getting here now is well weaker and later than expected. Even with impact starting now, I have overestimated these. And yes, I did use that as the space weather quake factor, but I'm going to keep the watch score elevated today, and here's why. We have three significant geocentric planetary geometries on the heels of the Mercury Solar Conjunction, and the incoming northern corona hole is measured to have twice the magnetic power of the ones we just saw. We'll hold at 8 at least another 24 hours. Tiny filament popping north central, got some more of them here in 193 angstroms, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone. Thank you.